So for anyone who hasn't driven an electric car before, it's quite a different experience. Here in the BMW i3, it's a matter of putting your foot on the brake to begin, and then it's just start-stop, and you hear the boot-up noise. So then to actually begin driving, it's just a case of this joystick here, you just push it forward, and if you want to reverse, just bring it back down to reverse by pulling forward. So drive. And then it's the handbrake we have here, just a simple park button. And do you hear that? Silence. And now we're ready to go. But the first thing I found when driving this is just how unbelievably quiet it is. It's almost deathly quiet. It's, it's, it's frankly an almost disconcerting experience at the beginning, but the ride, the ride is just so smooth with the electric engine. And here I am doing 50 kilometers an hour speed limit, and you know, you could almost hear a pin drop. It's, it's brilliant. In terms of the rest of the car, we have your main steering wheel with the volume controls, telephone, and the, the rest of the, the menu settings. But the base of the entire onboard computer, which you can see here, is controlled through this scroll wheel here on the main, in the center, just where the handbrake usually is. And on this, we have multimedia, so that covers everything from your iPod connected through Bluetooth, it could be your phone, um, then you have your basic radio, which, is, which covers everything. Um, telephone, I can, it's uh, also connected through Bluetooth, so it's all, most importantly, it's voice activated. So, to give you an example. Please say a name. Elaine B. Did you mean Elaine B? Yes. Hi. Hello. Hello. Yeah, you're uh, you're we're broadcasting now. Um, just showcasing the Bluetooth telephone system here in the BMW i3. Are you impressed? How's the sound? It sounds okay. Yeah? You can hear me fine? Yeah. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you perfectly. All right. That's fine. Okay. Thank you. Bye. So here we have the main navigation as we're going through the lovely Phoenix Park. You can scroll in and out in terms of zoom, obviously with the scroll wheel. Uh, and in terms of setting destination, it's, it's still, it's quite, it's grand in terms of being able to uh, select the destination because if you just it doesn't take too much vision you scroll up to the top guidance enter new destination destination input and we just go down to change the address and we can either do voice input again so please say the name of the street crane street did you mean Crane Street. Yes. Please say that house number or say accept. Accept. Start guidance or add as another destination. Start guidance. Guidance started. And there we go. And it'll tell me now. So when you zoom in, it'll tell me to go up here. It's, it's very, like, the voice recognition is, is very good. It's, it's able to pick up most things. Um, Thankfully, there's, there's not. If, if it gets involved in a lot of the Irish names, it does have a bit of a hiccup. But I suppose that's what you're going to find with most of these systems. They're not designed for it. As is the case with an electric car, sometimes you might be stuck with trying to find a nearby charging spot. And while the ESB has all their information on the map, you might be you might be a little perplexed as to actually where the nearest one is. So through the navigation, um, you can select through points of in, you can select through points of interest. Um, category search, vehicle charging station, and scroll down to start search. And then the map will immediately generate, and here we have a whole list of all the nearby charging stations. And so it'll find it once, it'll be able to find your nearest charging station, station based off yeah, your point in the map. So here we go, we'll go to Houston station. Scroll down and accept destination. Start guidance. 
Okay, so for charging your electric car on one of these e-car points, it's simply a case of scanning your card that you, that you sign up for. Opening the point. Oh, all right. Slotting in the hole. And then following over on this, on this car, the cable is over here. So by just simply pressing that open, pulling out the little plastic tube. And that is that. That is simply that is how easy it is to charge the electric car. Now obviously the it, it won't it won't happen in the space of 20 minutes unless it's a fast charging point. So in this instance, on a regular charging point, it could take approximately two to three hours to get maybe 80% or maybe a 60% charge, and three, maybe four hours to get four or five hours to get a 80% charge. So if you're going to be understandably leaving to do something else, maybe say go into town, um, you can just simply lock the car, and now that can't come out. So that'll be stuck there and you can leave it in the relative safety that you know, no, nothing can really happen. For the average electric car user, they'll most likely be charging this at home at, at overnight. So in that case, you're given this unit, which is perhaps even simpler than the, the public charging point. This is the part, this is the point that goes into the car. And here we have a standard plug socket. So say in your garage you can simply just un unravel the cord plug it into your plug socket plug that into the car and leave it now it will take longer it probably take eight hours to get to an 80 percent charge which will leave you in relative safety um, but that's that's it's kind of it you, you won't be you won't be plugging this in for a rush it's it's definitely for the homeowner so here we have it the bmw i3 bmw's first electric car to hit the market i have to say it's pretty impressive it handles well it it drives well the steers great uh, the technology in it is pretty impressive, navigation-wise, that's its main feature. Um, I have nothing but really praise to say for it. I mean, if you're looking for a top-end top end electric car, it's definitely worth it. I mean, you have the Nissan Leaf, which is probably a more competitive option to start off with, but it's a BMW. This is what you want. The prices start for the basic version at just over 34000 and that's with 10000 worth of SEA grant, which is 5,000, and VRT relief, which is 5,000. Otherwise, there's the extender version, which comes in at 41,000, and that's with 2,500 euro worth of VRT relief and 5,000 worth of the SEA I grant. So it's still a little bit more than the maybe 20, 25,000 worth of the Nissan Leaf that's on the market, but this is BMW, and you're going to get BMW quality and price. So I'd definitely give this a good recommendation.